Whether you're finding your way into the world of work, progressing in your career, or starting something new, there's an apprenticeship for you. You can do a job you love, earn a wage, learn in a way that suits you, make a genius decision, become an apprentice. With an apprenticeship, you'll earn as you learn, you'll work alongside experienced staff, you'll develop your job-specific skills, you'll gain a nationally recognized qualification, you'll have access to further development and progression opportunities. From small startups to multinational organizations, from GCSE level to degree level, from age 16 and over, with 23 sectors to choose from, there's an apprenticeship to suit everyone, and they come with clear benefits. You'll be entitled to holiday pay, to dedicated study time, to a full package of support, to equal opportunities, whatever your circumstances. Visit gov.wales slash apprenticeships Wales or call 0800 028 4844. Apprenticeships, a genius decision. One of the 23 apprenticeship sectors is the creative industry. And this industry will be our focus in this resource. Theatre Genedlaethol Cymru is the Welsh language National Theatre of Wales and we primarily uh, produce productions in Welsh and we tour across the country to different venues, to theatres and we also do site-specific productions as well. So in Theatre Genedlaethol Cymru we like to mentor and develop and encourage um, people into the industry and not so long ago we had an apprentice for a year, it was a technical apprenticeship um, and that apprentice had um, a wide introduction to the theatre. I'm Morgan James from Lampeter, I'm 18 now and uh, I've just completed a, an apprenticeship with Theatre Gen, a year long apprenticeship about technical stage lighting and so I'm now freelance and I'm working out in the industry and I'm loving it. I think it was just after a load of work experience with a company, uh, I just decided that, well, and from, from their advice as well, that I should take an apprenticeship. I actually went for the apprenticeship because one of, one of the guys I was on work experiences with at the time tagged me in one of the one of the uh, the job application forms on, on, on the internet and so from there I went and looked on the website and quite quickly just decided that that was for me and that I went, I went for it quite quickly. Etard was actually the first production I witnessed to see it again so every time I walked into like the practice room or anywhere I just learned something new. I learned a load of professional skills uh, so how exactly to do things and actually doing things properly and working to a theatre standard. So I was actually asked to go on tour with Estron about halfway through my apprenticeship and yeah, I actually I really enjoyed it. I worked on Estron as a, a technician assistant, so uh, Theatre Gen had a technician and he needed just a little bit of help, so I was working with him, just helping out doing anything. So I did lights, I did sound, a little bit of video and just helping out. Yeah. On nurses, I was actually a sound number two. I learned loads about sound, but also just about theatres again, just going into different theatres, seeing different ways, you know, speaking to different technicians and just the ways they've done things. I think an apprenticeship is just um, hands-on and a learning experience while getting extra paid. You get challenged with different things and every day you learn a little bit more and yes, we're doing this while you're getting paid and while people you know, are looking at you and seeing what you're doing and going, oh, okay. I had a level three qualification in stage sound and lighting. It gave me a little bit of independence because maybe the first time you did something, there was somebody doing it with you or helping you out. The second time then, they were just watching you doing it and just giving you, okay, you need to do a little bit of this. By the third or fourth time then, you're on your own. And I think that's just great preparation for going out in the industry. I think it's just great making networks within within the kind of industry just because once you finish your apprenticeship then these are the people that can help you out. What else I loved was just being a part of the team and just being being friends with everyone and everyone was just trying to you know egg you on, get you a little bit better, make you do think jobs a little bit better, tidy up your work and everything like that.
I think they're one of the best ways to actually get into the industry. Just go for it. As you can see, Morgan enjoyed his experience at theatre again at Lethal and has kind of found his little niche and what he enjoys um, within the theatre. And there are many roles within theatre itself, but also the production department with uh, stage management, sound, lighting, costume, a variety of um, jobs and roles. Morgan has since gone on to work within the sound department in the industry, which is great. I'm Dan Lawrence and I'm a sound designer and a music composer for theatre. So a theatre sound designer will need technical skills and creative skills to work on a theatre production. Creatively, as a sound designer, I'll be talking to the artistic director and the lighting designer and the set designer, costume designer, all the designers, all the creatives, as we call them, about how the show is going to sound and look and feel. It might be modern and edgy and minimalist or it might be a period piece that needs to reflect the era that it's set in. It could be a musical or a pantomime, all kinds of things. Have a look at this clip. It's just a simple scene change but notice how the sound and the lights complement the beautiful symmetry of the set. Even the stage assistants have matching costumes and their movements on and off stage are really tightly choreographed so they don't trip over each other. And the sound is timed precisely with the lights so that it happens the same way each night. I will also be talking to the production team about technical stuff. Are we going to be in one venue or touring? Is there a band and where will they go? What speakers and microphones and mixing desks do we need? And do we need to hire them in? And what's the budget? How much do we have to spend on it? Do we need to hire people in to help rigging it all up? Look at these two pictures. A production can be as small as one actor on stage with a chair, or it can be as big as a West End musical with a cast of 40 and a full orchestra. The sound requirements are going to mirror this. I'm going to show you a few examples now of how sound works on a theatre production and how I approach composing and designing sound for a show. This is a show called Drudwen that was uh, from 2018 and the company is Chimera and they're a circus company. So this is a show that incorporated circus skills and dance and storytelling into a theatre show. We're carrying some props on there as we enter the stage. A beautifully lit. Those stripes at the back are different kind of hangings and things. The set itself is all kind of metal kind of scaffolding bar stuff. And it goes together like a big piece of Mikado. So this aerialist here is doing some beautiful work on a rope. Uh, and I'm playing some live music to match it. But if I change the music, this is music from another part of the show. It changes the mood completely. Now it sounds a lot more sinister. And if I try this... Wow, that's just wrong. This is the scene that that sinister music was used in and this gives a nice example of how the sound and lights can work nicely together. The lights they are shining against the, the set and making those beautiful shadows in the background. There's pre-recorded sound in there. We've got our live musician, me, on there, playing different shakers and guitars and things through a microphone and plugged in. You'll hear lots of different sound effects happening in a second. So they have visual cues when they see that thing happening. And dance. So these three black boxes at the front of the stage are monitor speakers so that performers can hear the music and dance in time to it. Here we've got the original recording and I've recorded this in Logic Pro. 
Uh, up here we can see the drums. That's all the drums there. And you've got a bass. That's a fake bass, a sample. And then we've got real guitar. And it's got a mixing desk in it. It's got lots of different effects. Really handy tool, Logic Pro. You've got thousands of different instruments in there and lots of different loops that you can just throw in there. Uh, you can use it as a DJ, you can use it for remixing, you can use it for recording bands. I record most of my stuff in Logic there. But for actually running a show in uh, a theatre production live, we use another piece of software called QLab. So let's take a closer look at QLab itself. This is QLab here. This is what we use for queuing sound during a theatre show. But you can also queue lights and video cues and captions and subtitles and things like that. It's a very versatile piece of software. Um, this is called a queue stack. These are all our individual queues. We've got 49 queues in this show, including pre show music and after show music. And we're going to be looking at queue 21 and 22 which is inside. If we open that, we've got quite a few things going on in here. We've got some piano music. It gets a bit spacey in the middle. We have got some spooky music. Some kind of like bell, backwards bell sound effects. Um, we have got some atmospherics happening we've got a seagull and i think you know, you'll notice here that there's a little delay on this when it comes in this column here means that you can put delays on everything and that means that you can time everything beautifully and tell it when it's going to happen within this whole sound cue so you'll notice when i play it in a minute everything will come in at different times and when it does start playing you can see it it kind of runs out here and when it gets to the end it stops you can also loop things around so they keep on going as well um Okay, and the other things are these two snaps here. Now, these snaps, are uh, they correspond with the lighting changes. Um, so if I play one of these. So those kind of noises there hopefully will match up with the lights. So I'm looking at my script here, and I can see that we've got two visual cue points here. Q21, if we look at this here, is going to happen during this scene change here, when this fella, he's going to look at him for a couple of seconds and then we're going to cue the music. And he's waiting to hear the piano before he turns and leaves. Um, and our second cue, Q22, is going to happen when this guy here has put his plate down and he starts leaving. And when he just gets past that chair, that's, we're going to, that's when we're going to cue sound cue 22. Okay, this is again from uh, the show that we saw earlier. This is called Attard by Theatre Again, uh, done in 2018. Okay, let's try it. There you go, off he goes. First lighting state coming up now. Good. Then we'll hear some seagull and some garden. They're going to come on and they're going to lay the table and I'll get ready for my second cue when he puts his plate down. Off he goes and cue. And we'll see if it matches up. People get into theatre in different ways. You may have done drama in school and you might go on to university or drama college and study a course in technical theatre. And you'll cover sound and lights and set design and props building and stage management and all those things. And you can, you know, you can specialise in each one of those as you want to. You can also follow an apprenticeship path where you'll learn all of these things in a real working environment, in a real theatre, on real plays. And uh, you'll get paid for it whilst you're learning. So what's not to like about that? For sound in particular, you may have a background in music or composition or you might play in a band and you can get a theatre job based on those skills. And of course, there's loads of other jobs in a theatre as well. You've got box office, you've got your marketing, you've got your ushers, you've got set builders behind the scenes. Uh, you can get jobs like that based on your skills and your experience and what your interests are. It's a great place to work. There's so much going on there. 
So, I hope that's given you a taste of working in the sound department in a theatre. And if sound isn't your thing, remember there are plenty of other jobs in a theatre that need doing too. I think this is the perfect place for an apprenticeship because we're always looking for doers, people that want to do, people that want to be hands-on, people who want to tell stories. Um, this an apprenticeship works in a way that you're you're there from day one. You've got a 12-month contract within the company doing a job hopefully that you love and having a wage while you're doing it and you also get a qualification. So I would say your company is the place to be if you want an apprenticeship in the media industry. We are the only people that offer this. We're the only people that offer this kind of apprenticeship. Um, we're based within the industry. The assessors come from the industry. We understand the industry inside out. Um, and I also like to consider us as the kind of the naughty auntie in the middle, if you like. We're friends with the apprentice. We offer the pastoral care, the wraparound care, but we also know the industry really well. So if there aren't any problems, we can easily be that middleman. Crew is a brand new scheme that we've started this year. We piloted it last year, actually, and it worked really well. Um, it's a production scheme where productions can actually have apprentices for the length of the production rather than for the whole 12 months. Um, so it can be anything from a couple of weeks to four or five, six, seven, eight months even. Um, which means that it's much easier for a production to take an apprentice. I'm always ridiculously proud of my former apprentices. I've, I find myself uh, being there like a proud parent, I suppose, when I see what they've done. Uh, and we have so many examples of people that have stellar careers ahead of them, I think. Um, Sarah is one example who's going to go really far. My name is Zara Irami. I'm originally from Anglesey, currently living in Cardiff, and I am a digital journalist for ITV Wales. So after the apprenticeship, I've been lucky enough to keep my job at ITV Wales. So firstly, I went on a traineeship with Hans Jess Padrec, and now I am working on a short series of digital documentaries for Hansch, um, which is something that is totally different to what Hansch usually do. Um, and just being involved with creating content for young people um, around my age and younger um, that, pe that people will sort of resonate with um, is really exciting and something that I've always wanted to do. So I've always been a creative person and um, always wanted to be involved in a creative industry but I didn't know how that was going to manifest in my career. I've always been not the most academic person, um, school wasn't <laughs> the, my favourite place um, but I've always been someone who learns more from more practical things like I've always had jobs outside of school that I was involved in um, or projects. Um, and that's kind of where I was able to sort of learn on the job and I think that sort of environment just suited me to the T. That's why I think the apprenticeship was perfect because it meant that I could learn on the job, learn from other people in the field. It made it a lot more appealing. So the apprenticeship that I went for was one based in the creative and digital field. Um, so. I went into a more journalistic role, but it was open to sort of all sorts of roles. Um, so I know that a few of the people um, had um, specific roles working within the industry as a grip or like a camera operator um, on radio. Um, but in ITV Wales, it was kind of an open role. Um, so that meant that we could try everything, <laughs> which was amazing. So you could have one week where you'd be shadowing the camera operator, another week where you'd be in the studio or in the gallery, um, or shadowing a digital journalist. So you really got to um, put your feet in every sort of pool um, just to see where you sort of work best. And that was one of the best parts for me in terms of finding my sort of journalistic flair, as, you, as, you, as I would say. 
it was definitely better than I expected the apprenticeship because I think everyone kind of thinks of apprenticeships as something like engineering or like plumbing or something like that something um, sort of that you in a more I suppose a more practical workplace but the op- the opportunity to do that in a TV and film industry was just like quite exciting. I think um, another misconception when you think about apprenticeships is that it's of a lower pay grade than maybe an average job. But I went from like a, a manager position at a retail job to an apprenticeship and the pay was kind of similar or the same. Um, but I kind of, it was mind blowing for me that I could gain a qualification, get job, like a, a very like hands-on job in a creative industry and get paid for it. And I was just like, how lucky can you get? So anyone thinking of going on and or taking an apprenticeship opportunity, just go for it. But just have confidence and be yourself. And there's always something you can offer um, that they might not have thought of. I owe my career now working for ITV Wales to doing an apprenticeship. If you've left school, want to change career or are ready to return to the world of work, make a genius decision and become an apprentice. You learn a wage, receive hands-on training and gain a nationally recognised qualification. You'll also develop the skills that businesses need now and in the future. Find out what an apprenticeship can do for you and your career. Search Apprenticeships Wales Genius Decision or call 0800 028 4844.